friends, and welcome to the Happy Hour Jamie Ivy podcast. I'm your host, Jamie, and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. Every week on this show, I invite a girlfriend to join me, and we chat about the big things in life, the little things in life, and everything in between. Before we get to our guest today, I want to thank one of our partners for today, and that is Noonday Collection. I know you guys have heard me talk about Noonday Collection before. If not, they're a fair trade jewelry and accessories company that provides meaningful opportunities around the world. To create a marketplace for the artists and partners they work with, they invite women in the United States to launch their own businesses through the Ambassador Opportunity. That said, for the month of March only, if you are a Happy Hour listener, Noonday is offering you exclusively some of my personal favorite products when you join. So if you've ever thought about having your own business and you love Noonday Collection and what they do, this is a great opportunity for you. Just go to happyhour.noondaycollection.com to see exactly what those products are and see how you can join the ambassador community today. Guys, you're listening to episode number 132, and my guest is Heather Avis. I found Heather through our mutual friend, Rachel Hollis, and I immediately fell in love with her over Instagram. You've done that too, right? Tell me I'm not alone here that you find someone on Instagram and you love them. Heather is a mama to three kids, and all of those kids join their family via adoption. Two of her kids have Down syndrome, and today is actually World Down Syndrome Day. And today is also the day that Heather releases her very first book entitled The Lucky Few. Today on the show, we talk about inclusion, the right way to talk about people that have a disability. Plus, she shares how God brought all of her kids to her family. I want to give a little heads up that we talk about abortion in this episode. So if you have little ears, you might want to listen when they aren't around. Guys, if you want to send us a message about anything from the show, we'd love to hear from you. On Twitter, I'm at Jamie underscore Ivy, and Heather can be found at at Macy Makes My Day. And that will make sense when you hear our show. But for real, come on, we really want you to find us over on Instagram because that's where we met. I'm at Jamie Ivy, and Heather is at Macy Makes My Day over there as well. Guys, if this is your first time to join us at the happy hour, I want to say welcome. There are about 131 other amazing episodes before this one that you should check out. Guys, if you've been here for a while, goodness gracious, thank you. I'd love to hear from you. If you have questions, suggestions, ideas, whatever, send me an email to jamie at jamieivy.com. I cannot promise to get back to every single one of you, but I can promise to read every single one. Thanks for listening, guys. Here is my conversation with Heather. Hey, Heather, welcome to the happy hour. Hi, Jamie. I'm so thrilled to be here. This is exciting because you and I know what the listener note knows is that this is probably the fifth time we've had scheduled to chat. Would you say that's right? I would say that's probably right. Yes. I'm not sure what happened, but here we are. I'm so I thankful. mean, it's so crazy because that has happened a few times on the show where it just like we just couldn't get our act together. Mainly me. I'm not saying you, Heather, <laughs> but mainly me. Uh, but I'm so excited that it's now because whenever it does happen, I feel like that whenever the interview happens, it's just perfect timing. So. Yeah, I think it it's feels great like that. Like this was the day. This, this was, was the, the day. This yes. is it. Um, okay, so I was introduced to you from Rachel Hollis. Yes. Who she y'all was... are great friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she told me about you a long time ago. And so then I started following you on Instagram and th- the rest is history. I mean, I just <laughs> fell in love with your children because oh I would gosh. watch your videos <laughs> and all of a sudden I'd be like, you know what? It's not the worst day in the world. I think oh. I can do this. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is such a great way to look at it. I love that. I love that you just said that. Yeah, it's not yeah. the worst day in the world. That's it's not awesome. the worst day in the world because look how they're dancing. This makes yeah. me happy. I can do this today. You know. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love that. I feel like that's somewhere on our list of goals for why we do what we do. So that's awesome. See? Yeah. Okay, so a little bit about you, if our listeners don't know, um, you are married. Your husband's name is Josh. I believe mm-hmm. that's right. Yep. And um, how long have y'all been married? This summer, we got married in July. We will be married 14 years. Okay. It'll so be 13. 16 for us this summer. Nice. Isn't that crazy how fast it goes? I, I for sure, I was 20 when I got married. And in my head, I'm just not that much older. You were a baby when you got married. I was a wee babe. Yeah. You were a wee babe. I was, I think, 23-ish. Which yeah. is young. Yeah. Yeah. I know, yeah. I still think that's young. I hope my kids, I mean, whatever. It, every, everybody has their own thing, but. Right. I think it's good to wait a little bit, but I mean, we have our men. We love our men, so. Totally. I know we tell our middle daughter that she can s- maybe think about marriage around 30. Right? And she's five right now, so she d- she's down. She's, she's down like, okay, sure, mom. I like it. I like it. Um, and so you have three kids, and mm-hmm. you um, have a blog, a fabulous Instagram that I already told everyone about. <laughs> um, and then you actually are releasing your first book, and 
you here's what's cool about about everything that you do is you kind of what you're doing on Instagram and what you're doing with your book and what you do with your blog and what you're doing with your life. It feels to me, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. It feels to me like you have this. It's I wouldn't call it a mission because I think that you like it. Mm-hmm. And you can like missions. That's a weird thing for me to say, but whatever. <laughs> um, I feel like there is this whole kind of thing around your life of, edu- I want to say education, but that seems mm-hmm. so like classroom. Fail, yeah. You know what I mean? Like it just seems like, oh, I'm going to educate people, which is great. But it feels like you're bringing kind of this familiarity and this just plain normalcy. Maybe that's a better mm-hmm. way to say it. Mm-hmm. Um, to uh, parenting kids with special needs. Would you say that that kind of sums up kind of th- some of the things you do? Totally. I, I feel like you hit the nail on the head. I Really, one of our goals is just to normalize it, that people, I think, can so easily look at our family. And I was one of these people at one point and think, wow, good for you, good for you. I would never do that. Like, please, dear Jesus, don't call me to that. Um, in terms of we've ha- adopted all three of our kids, two of our kids have Down syndrome. And yeah, we just want to, what we're doing, we're just living normal life. Like I am average at best. I am no more special than anybody else. You know, I'm just doing what we do. And so I feel like that is a huge part of what we want to do. We just want to normalize. It's fine to have a kid with special needs. It's awesome. You can still be you. Like you're still going to be you. You're still going to do your life and have a kid with special needs. It doesn't just, your world's not going to be turned upside down as drastically as people think. Yeah. I sometimes feel like on a different level, but you could probably get this as well since um, all three of your kids joined your family through adoption. I feel like sometimes, and this happens way more often since we moved down to our small town. Mm-hmm. Well, our town's not that small, but whatever. Somebody at the grocery store the other day <laughs> and this sweet old woman, she's so kind. Like literally she was the slowest checker. And so there was a part of me that goes like, ah, oh, for the love, why am I here? But then she was just so kind. And so I like kind people. So sure. we're chatting and I have my daughter story with me who's black. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's asking about our family. And then I'm like, I have four kids. I tell them our ages. And six months out of the year, two of my kids are the same age. Okay. So okay. everyone, the next question always is, oh, you have twins. And I'm like, no, you know, three of my kids are adopted. And she literally had their, she's already the slowest checker in the world. She oh stopped Stops. checking. <laughs> yes. No. no. Oh Looked at me and was like, you're like one of the best people I've ever met. And I was like, oh, oh gosh, no, please don't ever say that ever again in your entire <laughs> life because that is so false. Um, so in one sense, I get that kind of sentiment that you're feeling that like, no, yeah, this is just totally. our family. Like we say all the time, like, it's just our family. Like, I, I know we look different and your family looks different as well, um, but it's just our family. And so yeah. I feel like that is something that you and I can probably feel the same on. Totally. And I don't know about you, but also in public, when we get looks, I just, people ask me, does it, does it get old? Do you get offended? And I just don't because we've chosen also in a sense to be the family, the family makeup that we are in terms of just how we look. Mm -hmm. So I'm a curious person. So when I'm out and about and I see a white mama with a black daughter, I'm I'm like, I want to know their story. Mm -hmm. Like, is that, who is that? Is that the mom? Is that the daughter? You know, like, so I, so I'm not offended by it either. Um, I, I don't mind questions. I expect stares. We get a lot of them. I mean, people do, we have had a few moments of like, please, dear Lord, that person did not just say that. But for the most part, <laughs> um, people are kind. <laughs> Don't you want to be like, remember Pee Wee Herman when we were growing up and he was like, didn't he have this thing where he was like, you want to take a picture or something? Didn't he have some oh kind my gosh, of, I think you're do you know right. what I'm talking about? And he would like, click, click. And then he would say, yes. he had some phrase. Oh my take gosh. Take a picture, are, it lasts longer. Is that him or that's me, just a sassy thing? From I don't know, but I okay. think I remember him having something in it. That's hello back to childhood there. Uh, Pee Wee oh. Herman, um, which my kids sometimes like they, those Pee Wee Herman movies are on Netflix for kids and <laughs> they creep me out. I'm like, I think there's something inappropriate about this and I can't figure totally. out what it is. Yep. But we should not be watching this. That is so good. Um, okay, so three kids through adoption. Um, yeah. And from what I know about you, I said I think you've said this publicly, so I don't, I'm don't. i not putting any words in your mouth. You sure. went through years of infertility. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so I guess eventually, finally, after a bunch of like pain and failed and money and all kinds of things, you and your husband end up um, in the adoption world. Now, from what I know, because I have three kids via adoption as well, is that when you fill out the forms, it's like, the weirdest thing in the world because so you have to answer weird. questions that nobody has to answer when they make a baby that's in their yes. uterus. Yes. Um, but you have to answer questions about what you'll accept, what you won't accept. Mm-hmm. Da, da, da. So I know that the first child you adopted um, um, has Down syndrome. So right. where did that come in for you guys? Yeah. So with our infertility journey, we got to the point where we could have spent a lot of money. Uh, we never went did in vitro fertilization. We were at that crossroads. 
And so there were a lot of reasons why we didn't do IVF. Um, and thinking about it too, it's like, well, we could pay this much money for an adoption or IVF, but at the end of an adoption, there is sort of like a guarantee in right. a sense of the baby and not necessarily with IVF. Uh-huh. That was one of the small pieces. Anyway, so yeah, we went with a private agency because we just wanted a healthy baby. We did not want a sick child. And I think, you know, you talk to moms who are pregnant and it's like, what do you want, a boy or a girl, da, da, da. And it's always like, I don't care as long as they're healthy. Right. Um, so that was our, our sentiment too, in terms of growing our family even via adoption. So spent a lot of money, private agency, filled out all those forms, which are so trippy. Oh, and, you know, so I don't weird. know, but we're like Googling things or we, our friends who are in the medical field, we're like, okay, what is this? What is yeah, this? Exactly. How does this work? Yeah. Never heard of this, you know? Uh-huh. Um, and, we're, and then we you were feel open. like the worst person in the world too. The you're like, worst. Nope, don't want you, don't want, I mean, that's, it's an awful feeling. It really is. Yes. And it's a personal journey. Like it's not, like, I don't even feel comfortable telling people what boxes I checked and didn't right? check because it's so right. personal. It really, really is. And yeah. And it's like, who knew there? I think it's pages. I think we had like three or four pages mm-hmm. of boxes to check or not. It's totally surreal. So what, we, what I always say is who our daughter was on paper. We had checked no to almost every box of who she turned out to be on paper. Really? Besides, like, besides like a girl, you uh-huh. know, like, yeah. yes, we were open to a girl. Um, and we found out about her through a passing email conversation be- with our social worker. She, our social worker, you know, wasn't going to ask us if we were interested in adopting Mm -hmm. her because she knew we weren't, um, given our profile. And so she just was like, giving me a feel about what was going on in the agency said in real, in passing, you know, there's a couple babies with down syndrome just placed with us. It's always hard to find homes for them. Um, you're like, hang in there. Your profile has been viewed once by a birth mom or something. Mm -hmm. And instantly, um, God did something in my heart as soon as I read those words. Mm -hmm. And I was so mad. Um, I did not, I just knew. I feel like I could now look back and say, at that moment, I knew I was going to adopt this little girl. But I. What were you mad at? I didn't want to. I did not oh. want to try with Down syndrome. I don't want to consider it. I wanted uh-huh. to. I didn't want it to, to rock my world. I yeah. wanted it to go away. Mm-hmm. I had this moment of like, I wish I never read those words because they changed mm-hmm. me. Yeah. They changed my heart instantly and obviously the trajectory of my life. And so, um, I went and shared it with my husband. Like I got this email. There's these babies with Down syndrome. What do you think? And the same thing happened with him. He's like, I really think we need to pray about this. Um, And it's a super long story of how she ended up actually being ours because she was really sick. And they had just, when we were, we were like ready to say, okay, we want to, we called our social worker where we want to pursue one of these babies. And one of them had been placed in that time where we were trying to decide or not. Mm -hmm. Um, And the other one who was our daughter was, um, they said the other little girl is Armenian. She's six weeks old. And they just found out all this health stuff that had got, that had been overlooked because at placement, there were just too many people in the room and her family is Armenian, doesn't speak English. There was a social worker, a baby social worker, the head Mm -hmm. of the agency, all these like foster mom, all these people. So there was lots of, um, lost communication in Mm -hmm. terms of health. So at that time they had just found out she was very, very ill. And we came to find out that they thought she was going to die. They didn't think she was going to make it much longer. This is your daughter. Yes. But she just said, we're not placing her right now because we just found out all this health stuff. We want to get a better grasp on her health before we place her in an adoptive home. And that was that. And it was like, okay. And then social worker said, are you open to Down syndrome? And we're like, yeah, I guess we are. I guess. (laughs) So I think it's so interesting when I was listening to you and I asked you what made you mad. Isn't it funny how sometimes I think all of us have these times in our lives, like I have specific things that I think about right now of, I wish I just didn't know that. Yes. Yes. Because now that I know it, it's like, I think Sarah Groves has a song about that. You know, I, it's like, now that you know it, you're responsible for it. So, I mean, it's the whole saying, ignorance is bliss. It's, yes. it's true. It's just a yeah. true saying, you know? Yeah. And so then you know that, yeah, there's that responsibility and that God knows my heart. Like I'm, I like my heart bleeds for the least of these and always has since my earliest memories. So just knowing how he made me to be and then placing that per- that email and that decision on my lap, it's like, I was so mad. Like so many moments of shaking my fist at God, like I'm mm. not doing this, mm. please stop. When did you like, feel, because I understand that feeling, especially when you're describing, like reading that sentence and just thinking, oh great, like I'm so mad at you, God, because here right. we are. I think I know what my path is, you know, when did that switch over to, I'm no, no longer mad about it, but I I want this to be my journey? Um, I think that conversation we had with our social worker 
at that moment when we found out she wasn't adoptable, like I hung up the phone and looked at my husband and we said, what just happened? What if we don't get a child with Down syndrome? So, oh, because now we've got this switch switched. in our heart. Yeah. Yes, totally. Yeah. But I mean, the story thickens with her because we then uh, she has a surgery in this time, meantime, and um, a few weeks later, we get a phone call. Remember that baby? She's mm-hmm. now available. Would you like to learn more? And so we're like, yes to Down syndrome. So excited. And then we step into this office with all the people involved, the nurses and the social workers and all these people and sit down in the little metal chairs. And then they pull out this like two inch thick file on this tiny baby and go through her health issues. And at that point, Down syndrome is a back burner issue. And we could care less about Down syndrome. And she was so, so sick. And it was like, okay, God, now what are you doing? Like my anger just grew. Like Because I said yes to this, but now you're asking a lot more of me. Yes. It was moment like out loud saying to God numerous times, I said yes to adoption. Mm -hmm. I said yes to Down syndrome. And you want me to say yes to this? This is mm-hmm. so unfair. Um, yeah. But you kept moving forward. I mean, yes. we know the ending of the story because it's right. your daughter. Um, and so then you guys decided to adopt her. Yes. Mm-hmm. And like you said at the time, Down syndrome was the least of your worries. Did it continue yeah. to be the least of, the, of her medical and worries for you? Right. So she came home um, a month after she came home. She had open heart surgery. And actually... The day she came home, like in the evening was our placement day. And that next morning, first thing in the morning, first day as parents, we had an appointment with her heart surgeon to schedule open heart surgery. So that was like, there we were in that world. And then she had a really severe lung condition that required her to be on oxygen 24 seven. And she was on multiple medications throughout the day. And so that piece is what felt really tricky. Like we're bringing a baby home who's Mm -hmm. on oxygen 24 seven. Yeah. And it's your and first time as parents. You've stepped into unknown. Parents. Yep. Yep. Um, and how old was she? She came home at three months old. Okay. So baby, yeah, baby. She was a baby. She yeah. was a little one. Definitely. And yeah, so we, um, I don't remember what the question was. Where Where was I going with this? Where I don't we, know, but it's just good. Baby? I don't even know either. <laughs> <laughs> it's just good. So, okay. So you call her Macy, right? Macy. Uh-huh. Macy. Okay. So Macy comes home. Uh, you're going through all of these things and you're, you know, where's were there moments when you and josh are parenting now you've you've stepped in god's answered this i, I want to be a mom um you know feeling in mm-hmm. your life and and he, he totally flipped everything upside down right. like giving you uh the daughter that he planned for you to have that didn't meet any of the check right. marks that you checked <laughs> which i think is just hilarious and just right. like god and it also it also makes me think heather it makes me think this sometimes not even in parenting but we can like have the best plan in the world Oh my gosh. Yes. And then God Let's is like, there. just kidding. Yes. How yeah, about this it, one? And he hands it to you and it's like, no, that's not what I wanted. And then it ends yeah. up being the best. I mean, maybe yeah. harder. Like, yeah. Right. Yes, totally. And I think that we have this misconception that hard equals bad. Right. And that sometimes that is the case, but I think the most of the time hard is just hard. Yeah. It's not bad. Mm-hmm. And I, that we have to get ourselves in that mindset of like, okay, this is just hard. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it's bad. Yeah. And I feel that forward. way with just adoption um in general sometimes yeah, you know like sure. there can be hard family dynamics in fact you just wrote about it recently and i want to talk about that in a minute but there can be hard fi- family dynamics but i even have to teach myself as like a 38 year old woman that doesn't equal bad yep you mm-hmm. know and so f- as a parent too with one of my kids if something's hard you know it doesn't mean oh this this relationship is doomed yeah it just but means I feel we like have to work is, hard i feel like that's counterintuitive to what culture tries to teach us and help us like pushes towards pursuing, you know, yeah. that idea of doing hard things. I think that it is this idea of like, how do we make life easier, 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 right. mm-hmm. um, and avoid all the hard places. And I think as Christians too, or as people who love Jesus, that there are these ideas of, okay, God's going to call us to these deeper, harder places. Mm-hmm. And not a lot of us are going to go there because it's so uncomfortable. Yeah. It requires so much intentionality and it's, yeah. yeah. And sometimes it sucks, you know, it, does. it totally sucks. But yeah. Jesus knew, I mean, he, he says, die to yourself, you know, totally take it yep. across. He, all of these things, he does not present this. This is going to be the easy life road for you, especially as a Christ follower. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know what? People do that with marriage too. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. we've had hard years. Yeah. I mean, doesn't everybody, right? Right. I mean, some of our, our hardest years probably were when our kids first came home, you know, just circumstantial stuff. Um. Okay, so you become a mom, a parent, uh, Macy's there. When did you guys think, how old was she when you thought, hey, let's do this again? Um, I had always had in my plans to like 
have my kids super close together. And so mm-hmm. initially when we started the process, we're like, okay, hey, we're going to do this a year apart. We're just going to go back to back to back. But she had all these health issues and yeah. we were spent so, so many hours in doctor's waiting rooms and doctor's offices and urgent care. I mean, so many hours. Um, and the oxygen thing was super tricky. She didn't walk until she was almost three. So there were all these other circumstances that felt um, mm-hmm. like there's no way. We're You're doing- like full-time mom <laughs> and full-time nurse. Totally. Yeah. Um, but I, she was about, I guess, how I don't even know how far apart our kids are. She was a couple of years old and we started the process for our second. Mm-hmm. Um, and But that second time around, we were different people, totally different people. And so we pursued it just differently in terms of what we were open to um, and what adoption meant for us. I think when we adopted the first time, and I don't know how you feel about this, but we were just wanting to grow our family. Mm -hmm. And then in adopting and stepping into the, like a harder adoption, a more difficult adoption, seeing God's heart for children who need homes. And Mm -hmm. so it, it went like it shifted. It wasn't just to grow our family. Mm -hmm. It was to adopt, you know, Mm -hmm. like it was to, try to be a solution to a problem that it exists. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No, I totally get what you mean. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we start, so we went with the county, our local county here. We live in California and county adoptions are totally free. So that was a huge piece at that point in life. Mm-hmm. Um, and we went in, like we hit, we checked very few boxes. You were so more open handed we this time. We were totally open. There were like yeah. a couple of things um, that we, that we just thought now that we have another kid, it would be hard to bring, a child with like these couple of things right. into our mm-hmm. home. Mm-hmm. But we were like anything, Lord, we will take any child in the whole wide world. And we ended up with a little girl who is totally healthy, like a total anomaly for the county. Mm-hmm. County adoptions, they tell you a child will be drug exposed in utero at best. And then everything else you could imagine could happen. So you have mm-hmm. to be open to a lot. And she had no drug exposure in utero. Um, she went straight from hospital placement into foster care. And so she d- she was able to bond with somebody. So there wasn't any. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's the trauma that always comes with any For adoption, sure. no matter what, how old the baby is. Right. Like, it's going to be trauma there. But she didn't experience crazy trauma those first six months of life. She came home a little less than six months old. Mm-hmm. She's just an anomaly. So she, her birth mother, we were told, is Guatemalan. Um, birth father unknown. There's some birth history stuff, birth mm-hmm. parent history stuff that we don't, it's hers to share if she ever wants to. Mm-hmm. Um, that made it feel like this could be pretty risky, but we you went with it. Her went with it. Yep. So her birth mom's Guatemalan. Yeah, I yeah. would never have figured that out by looking at her. Yeah, so we did a DNA test, and um, I feel like just looking at her, it was clear to see birth dad's black. Yeah, that's and, yeah, yeah, and that she, her number, like her top five countries, top what country was Mozambique, and then it was all the neighboring countries. And then wow. the other, the others were Guatemala and all those neighboring countries in terms of what DNA, her DNA matches. Why did you guys do that? I've never even heard of that. Isn't that interesting? Um, there were a couple of doctors that were convinced she was Indian from India. Uh huh. And it, when she was a baby, we, we could totally have gone that way. Um, and we were just interested, just curious. Yeah. You know? And and that our oldest and our youngest, we have these really great relationships with birth families. And I feel we have nothing from Truly's, mm-hmm. our middle daughter's name is Truly. We have nothing from her birth family. We don't have a picture. I mean, we have nothing. And if anyone needs it, it's going to be her. So we just wanted to like have a little, as much as we can in terms for her to ide- identify herself with. Yeah. Um, it felt, it just feels really important for her to know these, anything we can give her. That's good. I never yeah. even had ever even thought about that. Yeah. Um, she's beautiful. I think that she's like. A babe. Oh, I think God did like something really special when people that aren't from the same race make babies. Um, yeah, I agree with that. Because they're just, everyone's beautiful in the world. I'm not saying anything, but you know what? There's just <laughs> something special. Yes. Um, that's, I have one of my sons is birth mom, white, birth father, mo- most definitely black. Um, and he just has beautiful hair. I mean, everything. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, okay. So then you bring home this like just anomaly of a child from county and yeah. truly is her name. Um, did you feel as though, cause this is, this is something, I don't know if you ever feel this way. Did you feel as though like, wow, God, we said we were open to everything now. And, th- and, and now we get this like quote unquote, perfectly healthy baby, you know, like, did yeah. that feel weird a little bit? Totally weird because we had gotten in this mindset of like, I'm not, I'm not going to get in line for a baby. Mm. So 
uh, yeah. in a in uh, private agency, you know, and I'm not, no yeah. judgment to parents who are adopting privately. It's great. Right. But like, just that's where we were that if you go private, then there's like a dozen to uh-huh. two dozen waiting families that one mother is going to choose from, you know, yeah. one birth uh-huh. mother. And we yeah. were just like, we're not lining up for babies because no one was in line for our, do- our eldest daughter, Mason. Yeah. There was mm-hmm. nobody there. And she's the best thing that could have ever happen. So I, we did feel these moments of like, so many people would line up for this little girl. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, I but know. She, yeah. It's she like we was, have some friends that have gone in, like, we're open to any race, like, whatever. And then they bring home, like, a kid that looks just like them, blonde like hair, blue eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just like, it's weird because, God, we said anything, you know, yeah, yeah. and um, no one will even know that this child adopted. Not that we're, like, you know, walking around wanting to be patted on the back for adopting. None totally. of that, you know, yeah, you yeah. get what I'm saying. But it's just I kind totally of funny. Like yeah. Yeah, it is um, really funny. So then truly. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's the one, if you guys go check out, um, all of your kids are adorable on your Instagram, Thank but you. she's got a little bit of sass and, Oh, just a tad, just a tad bit of sass. <laughs> um, and then, so two kids down one more, one more to go. Yeah. When, story I mean, continues. You're just like, Hey, we want to have more kids. We knew we weren't done. So yeah. we knew that it didn't feel complete. And I had, for whatever reason, my as early as I can remember, I wanted three kids. Maybe I'm one of three. So that may be why. Uh-huh. Um, two feels like not enough. Four feels like so many kids. And so, <laughs> hey, well, I'll tell you, and anyone that's listening that is in my shoes, once you have three, like it doesn't matter. Okay, literally, because well, we have four, and my mm-hmm. friends are like, I'll be like, hey, send your kids over. They're like, are you sure you have four kids? I'm like, listen, like th- past three, it's just like it's fun. It doesn't yeah, even matter. Yeah. So, I'm not um, saying but, you should have more kids. No. I'm just saying there it is. Um, okay, so you always wanted three. We always wanted three. So, um, we. Truly was a really hard kid, is mm-hmm. a really hard kid. Mm-hmm. And um, she kind of rocked my world as a new parent. And so I, I'm in this moment and parents who have littles. So when Truly was about two and Mason was four, um, you're just in it, you know, mm-hmm. at that, that age. As a mom, it's just you're in it with little toddlers. It's so much energy. And Mason had extra needs on top of everything. And I was at maximum capacity. But we knew we wanted another kid. And so we started the process again through the county, um, expecting it to take minimum of a year because it's, of course, it takes that long, you know, mm-hmm. every time. And we go to the, the, it's called taking care of business and you do like fingerprinting, TV tests, background check, meetings, paperwork, da, da, da. We go do all that. And then um, we take a little picture, post it on the media, the social media is like, hey, guess what? We're adopting again. And then the next day, literally, I get a phone call from a good friend of mine and uh, she had adopted a little girl with Down syndrome and she had been contacted by a birth mother who got an in utero diagnosis that she was having a boy who had a congenital heart defect who had Down syndrome. Um, and she was going to be single mom. She has two older kids and she just felt like she wanted to give him a two parent home and didn't feel equipped. And so she was choosing an adoption plan. So my friend calls and is like, Heather, oh my gosh, I just found out about this mom I think you should contact her. And it was another one of those moments of, of course, I'm going to do this. And I'm so mad that you <laughs> told me. It's just not what you planned another time. Oh, because that was October and he was due in December. So two months later, I had a newborn. And it and wasn't I, through the county. It like, wasn't through the county. Yeah. So all the things I had planned. And the timing is what felt overwhelming. Like I, don't, I thought there's no possible way I can care for another human right now. I'm maxed <laughs> out. Max. We all know that feeling. Right? Yes. Yes. Um, but we start, we started pursuing it and, um, it was just a really special kind of like magical, holy couple of months. Um, also just constantly teetering on total terror because I just didn't feel equipped at the time to bring another child home. I wasn't sure I wanted another child with Down syndrome that for sure wasn't, we, I mean, we hesitated for Mm -hmm. sure because of the Down syndrome diagnosis. Um, because you knew the cost, you knew, you totally, you, you knew walking into it, right. Yeah. And what is this going to look like for truly like this? Mm-hmm. This is more hours of therapy, all the things we were. We love Down syndrome for sure. It's like the one of the coolest things God's ever done, I think. But, um, you know, it just comes with more. And then the congenital heart defect. OK, he's going to need open heart surgery for sure. He had a more serious heart defect than our daughter Mason had had. Mm. So we just and how you do heart surgery with kids at home. Like when Mason had her surgery, we were at the hospital. It was just that. Yeah, it was just yeah, y'all. I didn't have to parent any other children. It was just <laughs> right. us. You know, so we said yes, and but we got to like go to um, doctor's appointments with birth mom, like in utero echocardiograms, and listen to our son's heartbeat in utero. Like I never wow, had that with my girls. Right. And, 
and just little special things that I never thought I'd ever get that I had always wanted. And I got that and I got a mm. newborn. I had no idea what it was like to have a new, a newborn mm-hmm. fresh baby. It was so magical. Um, it, yeah. It, how it was, kind of God to give you those things oh. on top of what you didn't think you wanted. That, yeah. It really felt like such a kiss from God, like such a gift, mm-hmm. you know? Um, yeah. it was, it was really special, but it was, we walked through the whole thing with birth mom too. And that was, um, like something I've never experienced. It's hard to put into words. It's hard to share it. And probably the most difficult thing I've ever done is walk her to her car when she was discharged from the mm-hmm. hospital Yeah, and then go back in the hospital to the baby. I've, I don't know that I've ever done anything more difficult in my life. Mm. It was brutal. That is brutal. I mean, I have, I've been in a similar situation, so I can kind of feel a little bit, but man, I'm, that just kind of took my breath away for a second. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, but so necessary, you know, like I wouldn't, I'm so grateful that I got to be a part of that with her and Mm -hmm. experience. I mean, I, there's no way I could have experienced the depths of the pain that she experienced, but right. Yeah. um, Yeah. Mm. To have. Yeah. So you guys have open relationships with both of your, um, with Macy and August's birth parents. We do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We have that with ours. Well, one of ours as well. So that's always hard too when you have some that you don't and some that yes. you do. And it's just all the complexities that come yes. um, with adoption. You know, like it's, it's just not cookie cutter. And so you just never know. Hey guys, I hope you're loving my conversation with Heather. Real quick, I want to thank one of the other partners to make the happy hour happen every single week. And that is Prep Dish. Um, Prep Dish is a meal subscription planning service. What Prep Dish does is when you sign up every single week, the chef over there, Allison, is going to send you an email. It's going to give you instructions on what to buy from the grocery store, how to prep all of your meals in one setting, and then you have meals ready for the rest of the week. So you're going to do your grocery shopping. You're going to take probably two to three hours to prep it. And then, guys, the work is done. For us in busy baseball season, mamas, this is the best thing ever. In fact, my friend Amanda just tried it and she recently sent me a text and just was like, thank you so much for Prep Dish. She made apricot glazed chicken, Fat Tuesday gumbo, doesn't that sound good, and grass-fed beef spaghetti, plus an amazing frittata that she told me about. Guys, check out prepdish.com slash happy hour, all lowercase. And right now they're offering a trial just for our happy hour listeners for $4 for your first trial. That's a dollar a week. Guys, this is amazing. It's going to make your life easier and simpler. And did I mention it's all healthy food? Go right now. Prepdish.com slash happy hour. Okay, here is the rest of my conversation with Heather. Okay, so when this show comes out next week, you have uh, your first book releasing called The Lucky Few. Mm-hmm. And it's also World Down Syndrome Day. It um, is. Which I like, oh, y'all planned that so well. <laughs> um, so that's great. Where did you come up with the lucky few? You know, I was, so we have this Instagram account, Macy Makes My Day, and I did this hashtag, the lucky few. I just, I thought of it in terms of there are so few of us who get to parent a child with Down syndrome. We're so lucky. And I just said the lucky few. Mm -hmm. And then I did it a few times and then I started noticing that it was trending and I thought, did I make this up? Mm -hmm. And I, (laughs) I went back in terms of the Instagram hashtag and there, we were the first to post and the first like. 20, 30 posts is just my kids. Mm -hmm. Um, And now there's, uh, there's like 70 something thousand, the lucky few hashtags on Instagram. Wow. Are they all referring to the same thing? I'd say 97% are someone with Down syndrome. Um, Yeah. Okay. You're like a trendsetter. I am girl. You're totally a trendsetter. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So the lucky few from getting, from your seeing it from like, there's not many of us that get to do this. Totally. And so it started out with like the Down syndrome thing in mind. But then as I'm living my life and writing the book and thinking these things through, it's this idea that we're just talking about that God, there's opportunities for us to step into these really scary yeses off of the path that we've planned for ourselves. And there's such unbelievably rich beauty waiting there. And so for those of us who actually decide to take those risky steps and discover that beauty that's been waiting the whole time, we really are very lucky. So we Mm. are the lucky few. That's good. Now go back to yourself. Like when we were talking about you guys were stepping in the adoption and everything's scary and crazy and, and God just flips it upside down. Um, I remember you, when you were saying earlier about how the lady called and she told that, you know, just one sentence you glanced over and you're kind of mad at God. What, what, what do you say to like a woman who's listening and is like, I feel like God is like about to flip my world upside down. Mm -hmm. You know, like what would you want to tell her? You've been through this. Totally. I wish that I had some deep, profound thing 
like piece of advice, Mm -hmm. but the the reality is you have to just go with it. I like, that's all that I can say. Just say yes. You Mm. just, that's what a risk is. A risk is yes. It's a step forward, a step forward, a step forward. And you don't have to know what it looks like two steps forward. You just have to take one step forward. Mm. And it's, that's what risk is. That's what faith is. That's what trusting God with your life is. Keep stepping, keep stepping, keep stepping, trusting that he's going to put that, put your foot down every time you place it down where he wants it to be. Just being open to that. Yeah. You just got to do it. You just got to do it. It almost reminds me of one time I was on a canoe trip and I think I've shared it somewhere on the podcast. It was like, I thought I was going to die, whatever, long story. (laughs) But they told us if you happen to fall out, just kind of lay, keep your feet up and let the water take you where it's going to take you. Yeah. Because if you try to step or stop, you're going to get stuck, whatever. Um, and thank goodness that didn't happen to me because I would have been freaking out. But the point is they're saying like, just go with it yeah. and it might be harder and it might be scary. It might be difficult, but if you just let it take you where it'll take you, that's how you stay safe. And that's kind of yeah. like what you're saying. Just kind of give into it, go with yeah. it. Just keep going. And I feel like with us, there were so many moments where I dug my heels in the ground and I'm just so thankful for God's grace in that. Mm, yeah. we, did, we said no to our daughter initially, like there was a yeses, but there were a lot of, in between the first yes and the final yes, yeah. there were a lot of like, ah, I don't know. No, nope, right. I don't think we can do this. Mm-hmm. I don't think we can do this. And I feel like God was just so gracious with us. So just um, recognize too that God's grace is going to cover every mm. single misstep and every single mistake. You know, yeah. like his grace I always say you can't mission. miss what God plans for you. Totally. Like it's impossible. Yes. Agreed. Um, okay. So two of your kids have Down syndrome. Let's talk about this because um, I feel like this is a great time that you and I could use just to talk about things to, I said educate earlier. Didn't I come up with a better word? What did I say? Normalize. Normalize. But Here we go. Okay. Okay. Let's ed- educate a little bit. Um, I've walked through this a little bit just in the adoption world. Um, and then I have my closest girlfriend in the world. Um, her daughter has special needs and one of our other families, their son has special needs. So like I've, I've been immersed in this. And so that's how it's helped me. But there are a lot of people who are listening who might not know anyone with Mm -hmm. someone that's adopted or anyone that has um, a child who has autism or whatever. You said one of your thing that you like to do is talk to people about first people language. Um, And I first heard about first people language uh, using that kind of phrase for it to describe it was way back. This is crazy on like, Episode number six, my friend Megan McCammett was on the show, if anyone Mm -hmm. also wants to listen to that. And she grew up with a sibling. Her sister um, has special needs. And so she she came to it, which is interesting. You might be interested. Let's do it from a sister point of view. Sure. Um, So that was the first time I heard that. So explain to everyone listening, first people language. Yeah, people first language. Oh, sorry. People first first. Person first. People first, first people first. is like the tr- uh, the president. So maybe I should, I got confused here for a second. <laughs> people first language. Okay, go ahead. Perfect. <laughs> um, it's just the idea that no matter what kind of ability somebody has, they are a person first, that we're not identifying people by what they can or cannot do or however they've been labeled. So with Down syndrome specifically, it's super simple that you would just say a baby with Down syndrome a child with Down syndrome, a person with Down syndrome, rather than a Down syndrome baby or a Down syndrome child. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, that's really all it is. And you can put that with anybody, like a person with cerebral palsy Mm -hmm. or a person with autism. Right. We have a friend who is an adult who has albinism. Mm -hmm. And so he grew up with the, you know, intensity of like, you are an albino. Right. Right. Instead of he is a boy, a man, whatever. Right. Who has albinism. Right. So many things before that. And especially when people wear their ability or their different ability right. on their uh-huh. face, um, it is, it's so easy to just go straight there. And I think mm-hmm. as an advocate for people with Down syndrome in this, in this Down syndrome community, um, we just want people to see our kids for so much more than Down syndrome. Mm-hmm. For sure. So that would be the same as saying, um, he is a, a boy with special needs. Yeah. Right. Not mm-hmm. a special needs kid. Right. Right. Or like, yeah. I even think about it from like adoption. Um, like some of my kids have some trauma. I'm, uh, you know, that they have sure. kind of walk through that affects their life. Yeah. So I could say that sh- my child has trauma issues. Not like it's not a trauma kid. Totally. Same thing. Yeah. And yeah. And I mean, there are circles like, 
in some friendship circles, we can get relaxed and slip, for sure, you know, yes. like for sure. But you know who your audience is. I think it's for like the greater good of all people listening. How well sure do you do simple. this, Heather, when a complete stranger says that to you? Are you like the person? Because that's hard for me sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it varies. Are my kids around or are my not, kids not around? So that's yeah. that used to be a big kicker for me. But what do you do? Oh, man, I am. A, I hate it. I hate correcting people, period. It's so just do not. You? I do. Okay. Yes. Um, so let's role I'm play. Ready? Nervous about. Well, this just happened. I just did a podcast <gasps> interview with someone and they said, oh. you're Down syndrome daughter. And I said, it, and they were in the middle, in mid sentence, I said, I'm so sorry. Let me, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just want to correct you. It's my daughter with Down syndrome. Like, oh, thank you so much. And then we move on. And did um, that bother you? I hated doing it. Totally. But I mean, did, did you think less of the person? Oh, no, no way. See, that's I, the key right learning. there. Is it yes. you're educating? Yes. Thank you. Totally. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I mean, we've had people like at a Trader Joe's once, this woman walked up to me and my son was in the cart and she's like, oh, he's got the downs. I'm oh, like, gosh. Oh, oh, sweetie gosh. pie. <laughs> was she an old woman? <laughs> yes. And yeah. I said, and then she said, you know, he's going to be with you forever. And I oh, said, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gracious. This is such a generational. That would be like a oh, grandma. No. Yeah. Totally. totally. And oh. so I just said, oh, you know what? He does have Down syndrome. Yeah. And I sure do hope he's with me forever. Yes. And that was that. You know, like, <laughs> oh, my on. gosh. I could see an old grandma like. Oh, girl, you know, he's never leaving. I'm right. like, if that would have been like a bad day for you, you could have been like, you know what? Shut up. Get away from me. Totally. Um, totally. I do that. The thing and you might do this as well. Um, the thing that it doesn't bother me by any means, yeah. because I'm like you, like, I didn't know about this until my best friend, you know, uh, um, has a daughter who has special. I, I mean, I didn't know. And so right. people just don't know. But a lot of times for me, it's like, hey, do you know their real mom? Mm-hmm. Right. Or they say, um, are they brother and sister? Mm-hmm. And I and I know what they're asking. They're wanting to know if my kids are biologically related, my, right. especially my two from Haiti. And right. I always just say they they are not biologically related. Mm-hmm. I just answer it like that. Or I just say, I do know his biological mom. Like, you know. Right. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. It doesn't make me mad at all. Yeah. Because people I, I really believe most people are well intended. And when they're when they're not, when it is like you blatantly rude. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And it's so, so rare that it is like blatantly rude where someone's trying to be hurtful. It's very, very rare. OK, so, so yeah, I, I have this question for you as well. Yes. I recently just um, had um, on my show uh, Rebecca Lyons. Oh, and yeah. so, yeah, she has her six, her. her oldest son, 16 year old um, has Down syndrome. Right. And so she she told me, I thought this was really interesting. So I'd love to hear what you have to say about this as well. She said that her, so he's her oldest, mm-hmm. um, kind of like you with Macy. And, and mm-hmm. then she said that when they moved to New York City, it was kind of the first time that her other kids really ever realized that their brother was, something was different about him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What have you found with your family dynamics, with your kids? Like how is true, like how does that, how do they handle each other and has truly ever had to stick up for her siblings? Right. So, I mean, there's so many layers to this because <laughs> truly is just five and her, both of her siblings have down syndrome. Right. And so it kind of is what it is in our home. I mean, we talk about down syndrome super openly. We celebrate it. So like Mason will notice people with down syndrome in the community or uh-huh. truly will tell truly until recently. She's really cute. She would, um, she'd see someone with down syndrome and she'd go, Oh my gosh, mom, look, they're adopted. I'm like, oh, "Oh, honey, maybe, (laughs) Uh but they have Down syndrome. I think that's what you mean. Or like, oh, mom, look, they had heart surgery. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, yeah, maybe they did. But what you mean is they have Down syndrome. Right. Um, So she, I think she's still a little bit young and Uh we're so, yeah, we're just doing life as normally as we can, you know, like we're, we're just very involved in. And it's just her norm. Yeah. All things eight-year-old and all things five-year-old and all things three-year-old. And so. Um, I'm sure there will be a like a moment where we realize or truly it's like, oh wow, my sister is so different. Mm. Um, she will and she and truly is just <laughs> she's five. She's very self absorbed. And so there's that as Which well. All kids are. Come on. Totally. Like totally. Yes. So that's so true that you said that. That's, yeah. That's, so like at yeah. the park, if we're at the park, there are lots of times the park always feels really um there I don't have anxiety but that's the best term I could use. I always have a little bit of anxiety at the park because of how kids are going to interact with Mason, um, how her peers are and, and truly could care less at this point in life. She's just playing, Mm -hmm. but I am sure a day will come. I'm assuming where she will be like, this is not cool and do something about it. Yeah. 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 But there's still little. 
That's how I am. We had a conversation at the table the other night, and I don't know how we started talking about adoption. Again, I mean, you know, we talk about it openly. Three of my kids are black, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the funniest yeah. question well, early on when they're like, when are you going to tell them that they're adopted? And we we're like, uh, I think they might figure it out. Um, <laughs> uh, but we were talking about it, and so we were saying like, oh, do you know other families? And we we are really, really blessed. We have a lot of families that we do life with um, that have grown their family through adoption. And so. <laughs> Uh, we were naming everybody, and I still get so tickled sometimes when my kids, I mean, how many, how long have they known these people, and how many years have we talked about this, that they'll still go, wait, Caleb's adopted? I mean, and it's just, <laughs> it's it's yeah. hilarious to me, but it's just because it's just so normal. It's just their life. Totally. And so, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, we're in the same boat. I think, I mean, I love it. I think it's great. Well, thanks for being open with your story of adding to your family and talking about, um, down syndrome and world down syndrome day is next week. Does, yes. What does that mean in life? Like, right. So March 21st, 321. So down syndrome is called trisomy 21 and it's the 21st chromosome that has three copies. Oh, so, so this 321 actually means something. It's not a yeah. random day. No, it's the only day of the year that could work. Yeah. See, I learned and something so, new. Yeah. I don't know when it became world down syndrome day. It has been since we've had Mason. Yeah. Um, and it's just, I mean, it's like a social media thing for sure. That right. Lots of people are wearing their down syndrome with pride. Right. Um, right. And uh, bringing awareness and shouting the worth of our kiddos because yeah. they need, they need that for sure still in our mm. world and society. Do you feel like it's interesting? And I just thought about this question, like thinking about that, you know, older woman approaching you in the store and being like, oh, what did she say? I already forgot. He, does he have the down? Does he have the, the, the like, <laughs> does, she have, does he have the downs? Um, <laughs> it's such an older generation. Like I'm talking even like, our grandparents and older, not my parents. I don't think their sure. generation, but um, does he have the downs? Do you feel as though you're seeing a shift um, in maybe inclusion, um, awareness, education um, in, I'm talking this specific, right, um, right. Downstream, not just specific special. Do you see it, a shift a little bit? With Down syndrome, it's such an interesting question, Jamie. I feel like I could talk for hours about this. So um, I'll try to keep it brief. I, I barely see a shift. And so, really? I think, yes, unfortunately, okay. uh -huh. I think one of the biggest tells is um, if we look back, I have a friend who's 27. She has Down syndrome. When her mom had her 27 years ago, they, the social worker were like, you've got to put her in an institution. You can't raise her. She has to be institutionalized. So we know that was happening 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. I, the I, 80s. We have, right. Yeah. We have friends in, I have friends who are in their 50s who have Down syndrome. And of course, I feel like, of course, 50 years ago, that was happening, but it was happening 27 years ago yeah. too. Um, so that's not happening. However, the push for terminating an in utero diagnosis because solely because of Down syndrome is a norm. That is the mm. norm. Um, that's the norm even, even for people who love Jesus. Mm. And so that speaks volumes that no, yeah. it hasn't changed. The mm. idea that Down syndrome is a bad thing and not worthy of life, so we'll put him in an institution. The idea that Down syndrome is a bad thing, not worthy of life, so will terminate. It's the exact mm. same mindset. And so, yes, there are lots of good things happening for sure. And I don't want to ignore those. Um, I'm so thankful my children are alive now with Down syndrome mm. compared to 10, 20, 30 years right. ago. Right. However, the, the overall idea that Down syndrome is a bad thing um, or is this tragic thing to mm -hmm. happen to someone's life is still the norm. And so then that makes me feel like we haven't made much progress. Yeah. Do you know all. anyone that has terminated pregnancy because of Down syndrome? Uh huh. Okay. And and um, I would say all of my friends who parented their child got an in utero, in utero diagnosis were encouraged to terminate. It was mm -hmm. expected. Like one of my girlfriends, their doctors are encouraging them to do that. Yeah. I mean, that's too like how you're talking about things haven't changed. That seems like also a medical issue as well. That 100%. that would be the first thing that a doctor totally. would encourage someone to do. Totally. And there are doctors, I mean, I, there are people who like had incredible doctors who are like, this is going to be great. You're going to do fine. Don't mm -hmm. even worry about this. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, one of my girlfriends, she has three daughter, older daughters, and then her son had Down syndrome. They got the, she brought her kids, her daughters with her to this doctor's appointment because they're older and it's like exciting. They're going to have a baby brother. And the doctor says with her daughters right there, oh, he tested positive for Down syndrome. We're going to, we can go upstairs and take care of that right now. Stop. Yeah. And that was one experience. She had more experiences. Like you, you're going to keep like another doctor when she had some blood test done for something else with the pregnancy. And he's like, I think I need to know. Yeah, my son has Down syndrome. And he looks her in the eye and goes, and you're keeping it? I mean, this is... God, Heather, that like... So many stories. It, like it's this. hurting my heart. I mean, like, it's yeah. hurting my heart just 
thinking about the lack of value for that life. Oh, totally. And so, yeah, like, like I said, we've come really far, but, um, we have so much further to go in Mm. terms of people seeing the worth and value Mm. of people who have down syndrome because they're the best. They're the Uh, best. Well, I'm so thankful for your story and for your just vulnerability and talking about the hard and the, and the awesome and all that kind of stuff. Um, man, I, I am going to think about that all day, Heather. (laughs) I mean, it's like you hear that and you know that, but honestly, I'll admit my ignorance. I'm thinking it's 2017, surely that they're not still advising to terminate a pregnancy because of a diagnosis of Down syndrome. Yeah. I mean, they used to have to do it, uh, amniocentesis to find out. And now they have this new blood test and it is that you do the test at however many weeks. Do you know Um, how many weeks? I don't, um, regardless of how old you are. I mean, a lot of pregnant friends are like, oh yeah, I'm getting that such and such blood test. And they're yeah. testing for Down syndrome. That other, one specific thing. Well, they're testing for a couple other okay. chromosomal uh-huh. But it would be the chromosome. Okay. But they're looking specifically for Down syndrome with the intention of terminating. Totally. Oh my gosh, I can't even take this in. I know. Am I, I stupid know. that I didn't realize that? Or is this not no, talked about that no, much? I, it's not talked about that much. Okay. It is in my, like in my little Your bubble, circle, right. You know? Yeah, like uh-huh. in my tribe. For yeah. sure. But no, it's not talked about. Um, I think because people don't expect it to happen to them, mm. which even that's such a terrible sentence to have to say as a parent who has children with Down syndrome, like, like this is going to happen to me. You know, this idea like, that this yeah. is very bad. Yeah. It's really yeah. interesting. The whole, the whole thing is interesting. I, I just, a couple weeks ago, sat down with a mom who's just had a baby. He has Down syndrome. And just like sitting across the table from someone who feels like the worst thing that could have happened to them happened. Mm. And these are my kids. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, my kids have this. Um, do you, do you understand? Like, I know that's hard for you, especially since this is your world and, and these are your babies. Um, is there a part of you that remembers what that might have felt like for you? Um, I, lo- I had all of my feelings of just heartbreak and doubt and all of that, um, like tragedy was mostly in my infertility. Okay. And so the down syndrome piece, there was a quick moment of, Mm. Oh, I don't want this. Um, but it, it shifted real quick. Yeah. 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 But I have so much grace for all these mamas. I mean, everyone's doing the best they can with what they know. Right. And that is so true, Heather. And I I tell every single one of them, you know what they're before, Sooner than later, it could be in a week, it could be in a couple months, in a couple years, but sooner than later, you're going to look back, everyone in the family, everyone who knows this kid is going to look back and go, why were we sad? I mm. cannot figure out why we ever felt sad. But you know what? There's not education. I'm learning so much right now. And I, I have dear friends of mine who have kids. I, I, don't, I don't have any friends that have um, children with Down syndrome, but with other things. And so I'm learning so much right now. Mm-hmm. You're telling me that doctors are still advising women to terminate a pregnancy based on this diagnosis. So, I mean, I, I almost see how a woman could be so taken back yeah. by hearing that news because it just, like you said, we're just not, it's not educated. We're not talking yeah. about it enough. Um, how common is um, Down syndrome? Um, you know what? I'm not totally sure what the statistics are these this day and age. I, th- I yeah. feel like a, one in 800 but okay. but they they say depending on who you're talking to and what state you're in and all these things that the termination rate is as high as um, nine out of ten women who get in utero diagnosis terminate, and which is shocking, right? Ninety mm-hmm. percent. Yeah. But there are other statistics as low as like sixty three percent. But mm-hmm. still, yeah. more than half of the women who find yeah. out it's still terminate. Yeah. 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 Uh, Well, I feel like that I literally could talk to you for hours and just have you just blow my mind and educate me. Um, So thank you so much. I'm sure you get contacted a lot um, from women um, who are parenting or find out that they're about to parent. And so I'm sure that happens to you. So I just want to say thank you for taking time to do that. Okay, let's move on to the not so educating stuff, but just as fun (laughs) conversation. Um, What are three things you're loving these days? Oh my gosh. Three things I'm loving. Okay. Let's see here. Um, I, my husband just went actually with Dave Hollis, our friend, Rachel's uh-huh. husband to Sundance and they yes. had a swag bag in their room and uh-huh. it had an, uh, um, uh, Amazon echo Alexa. <gasps> we just Do got you guys one too, Alexa? Heather. Okay. Do you love Alexa? 
Okay, and Aaron got it in a swag bag too. What's up with them going to these places where that's in the swag bag? I mean, I I don't know how we got how we got that's invited amazing. to places like that. Yeah. I was okay, so, so we just got one literally a week ago. So tell me what you love. We do music in our house constantly. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it is like shuffling, you know, like we're on yeah. our, and so we're always on the iPad. We have to connect it to the mm-hmm. Bluetooth speaker and then it's like shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And so we just tell Alexa, she yeah. does it for us. Alexa, play uh-huh. Adele. Yes. Alexa, play, tra- tra- play James Taylor. Alexa, yep. stop this song. Alexa, turn it up. Alexa, uh-huh. turn it down. I mean, it's the best. The music yes. part is what we do. That's, That's all we what do we've today. used ours for the most as well. We connect it <laughs> to our Bluetooth and then all of my kids, like they just take turns. Alexa, yeah. play, you know, whatever. Okay, so Alexa, you're loving that. Okay, three things I'm loving. I should be ready for this. Um, it's okay. What do I love right now? I, oh my gosh, I have something that I don't know that I should say because I'm totally ashamed. Wait, is it inappropriate? Because that just makes no. me Wait, you're ashamed? What is it? I just binge watched, so I'm uh-huh. done and I'm so sad. Um, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. <gasps> <laughs> Like the entire, all the seasons? Aren't there like no, 78 okay. seasons? Uh, there are six and I would had already watched up through four years ago and then they didn't have it anymore. So then I binged watch season five and six on Netflix at least. I, we don't have cable. We just do Netflix and Hulu. That's two. And yeah, and it, it was on Netflix. I was just like scrolling through and saw it. And I don't like any of the housewives except for Beverly Hills. Okay. I like them so much. That is the only one I've really seen. And gosh, I feel like... About eight years ago, would that have been when it first came out? Yeah, probably. Okay, so eight years ago, I was in the hospital with a kid for a while, and we don't have cable either, and I got sucked in. And literally, mm-hmm. when we got released from the hospital, I was so happy, but I was like, how am I going to watch this show? Right? I need to see it. So I, it's crazy, isn't it? It's wild. It's for sure not real life, obviously, I, but it's so fascinating and like a train wreck. Like, you can't a train wreck. stop watching, and but it's like, I shouldn't watch this because... This is a waste of time, but <laughs> right. but you're like, I can't stop. I love it, but okay, I'm done. I'm caught up. Maybe I'll it. have to catch back up if I'm like, I always do stuff like that if I'm like sick, you know, yeah. then I like, it's totally justified. Um, yeah. okay, okay. What else? One more thing. Oh, what do I love? What do I love these days? I love, oh man, I'm going to think of a hundred things once I, I know I'm not here. You can and just I do two if you want. Put- I'm going to do two. And if I think of a third, call it I, a day. Yeah. I mean, those, yeah. And my two are just so deep. Look at me. I, hey, these are my favorite things though. I mean, this is like what you would text your girlfriend. Be like, Oh my gosh, did you see episode? Blah, blah, blah. Um, okay. What are you reading? Are you a reader? I am an avid reader. I love to read so much. Um, okay. I have this book that has rocked my world. I recommend to everybody, but I can't get through it. It's I'm going to be reading it for years. So it's called far from the tree mm-hmm. by Andrew Solomon. Um, it's a beast of a book, like a thousand pages long. And oh the last 300 are just the index, like the notes on footnotes or whatever. Oh my gosh. It's, so this man, Andrew Solomon, he writes about 10 different special needs or like anomaly categories. Uh-huh. Um, each chapter is about one of those categories. And he interviews families. He goes into the history. He goes into current. It's fascinating but it's also really heavy. So like it, he talks about Down syndrome, there's a whole chapter on Down syndrome, autism, dwarfism, um, mm. um, schizophrenia, uh, kids who are Ooh, products I, of rape. Yes, I'm looking care, at it. Prodigies. It's, it is one of the most incredible books I've ever read, um, but it's really heavy, really okay. heavy. And so I'm a nighttime reader and I was reading at night and I couldn't sleep. Because you just kept thinking about it? I, yes, because yeah. it just was too heavy. The stories are, but I feel like it's a must read for the whole world. Like everyone's got to read this book. Okay. Saying that though, I'm halfway through and I haven't picked it up in weeks because it's, it's so hard. Like, it's not it, a like, beach oh. read. You're not telling me about a beach read. It's not a beach read. No yeah. way. Um, I'm reading a book that was self-published by a woman named Amy Pierce. It's called I See Red. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I said her last name right. I can get that to you for sure. And she's someone that I got connected through social media with and it's Mm -hmm. fiction but it's this really fascinating story about um a person who's like a behavior specialist and working with a six-year-old boy who's or seven-year-old boy who's been through crazy trauma and it goes back and forth between their two perspectives so it's like her she's referred to as icu so it's like her whole perspective icu and then Mm -hmm. icu red and it's his perspective and it's like their relationship with one another through their perspectives it's fascinating that does sound fascinating Really I, good. 
I added both of these books to my Goodreads account. Awesome. Yeah, they're really good ones. And that's all I'm reading right now. Okay. I have a stack, a huge stack of books waiting for me. But it's hard when I'm in, I'm in the middle of launching a book. And so that mm-hmm. feels like. Um, yeah. You can get back to life after March 21st. That's what I'm expecting. But I've also had a couple of people be like, oh, yeah, right. You're just yeah, right. Started. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's how I am. Like, I, you know, am about to turn in a book. And so I'm like, oh, oh I'll have my life back. And I was like, nope, no, you won't. But you might just, have like a month. That would be nice. Be I'll, like take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, okay. It was so much fun to talk to you. And you know what? I will have to talk again because and we'll have to talk more about, um, adoption because you just wrote something on your blog and I'll link to everybody. I think you wrote on Valentine's day actually. Yeah. Um, just about, oh gosh, I was going to, I'll just quote you real quick because I thought it was just, um, that good. You said it was talking about a word about true love. And you just said the gap between what you are supposed, that's quote unquote, supposed to feel for that person and what you actually feel has you feeling desperate and hopeless and maybe even badly about yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, And you blog about just feeling different about your second child um, than Mm -hmm. your first in the beginning. And I feel like I just opened up a whole can of worms and they're about to say (laughs) bye. But I just wanted to say like, I get that. And so even if you're feeling like, I don't know if I should have put that on the internet for all the world to read. Even if no one else says anything, I want you to hear from me. Like, I get it. Oh, thanks, Jamie. I think, yeah. I mean, you talked to a lot of adoptive mamas. I feel like we've all had these feelings. Mm -hmm. And even not, even just parenting in general, like this kid, that's just tricky, you Mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And I think that what makes everything, which is what you're doing a lot with your life and what I try to do and what so many women in this world try to do is just to be able to be okay to say it out loud. Totally. Yeah. Um, And then when we say it out loud, yeah, it takes the shame away. And it also gives permission for someone else to say me too. Yes. Like that's just so a important. big thing for me is handing out permission to say it's okay um, if if you feel like you don't have it all together today or if you feel, you know, it's just me too. Like I just, I'm just yeah. telling you, Heather, me too. I get it. Oh, thanks, Jamie. I love that. Oh, that means a lot. So good. Um, okay. Well, this has been fabulous. And um, I, I know we got kind of heavy there with the abortion stuff. And so um, one thing I always just love to, and I, I know I would assume and you can add your words to this, I would assume sure. as well that you would be someone who would just pour out the grace to someone oh my gosh. who has yes. walked through that um, yes. journey. Um, and so I think it's good for us to talk about it. I think, I mean, I really was blown away and it's weird because I, I mean, I don't think, I don't live in a hole, like, I, you know, whatever. Um, sure. But I just don't think I was that aware of that diagnosis leading um, to that so confidently for so many people. And so, but just if someone's listening, just know, man, there is so much grace for you today. All the grace. All Absolutely. the grace. All the, all grace. the grace. And so always. Oh, and we totally. can use our story. And I mean, I, I, I never had to walk down that path, but I have so many other awful paths that I walked down that there's so much grace in my life for it. And I get to also vocalize that and take the shame away from other people. So totally. So, and yeah, with the whole Down syndrome thing, it's like because I am face to face with so many people who are just feeling this tragedy has happened to them. And I'm like, but these are my kids. Mm -hmm. Um, that it is, it just has to all be showered in grace upon grace upon Mm -hmm. grace. And, and I'm not offended by it. You know, like people, like I said, people are doing the best they can with what they know. And then we're just going to let grace drench us and the rest of it, you know? So yeah. And also like Heather, just what an honor to that, that God chose you and he chose your kids for you. And he chose you to be a voice, uh, for just, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds oh my of gosh girl i can't even believe it i can't i mean the fact with this book coming out and the launch we got this launch team this like private facebook page that i'm just in tears every day it, i don't know how to put words to it and i feel like i don't want to sound cliche or cheesy but mm. i'm so unbelievably humbled to my core mm. that i get to talk to you about this that i get to do what i do i cannot believe it i really can't well, I'm going to have to let you go because I feel like yes. I'm about to start crying because oh, I mean, it's just like, <laughs> I love so much. And I, I, and in your story, we've talked about this a lot, but I love so much when people are just totally, their lives are changed by God. Um, yeah. And then it's like, it changes the entire trajectory of their world. Totally. And that's what happened to you. You know, it's what happened so, to me and I'm so yeah. thankful, oh. so thankful, so humbled. Jamie. It's oh, been great. I know. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out today and all of the Thank things. You. And I feel like sometimes when I have people on here, I'm like, we could chat for two more hours. And so I know, right? That's I'm like how so, I feel. Sad. so sad. I know. So... <laughs> I'll have to come out there and visit you and Rachel. That'd be fun. Do it. That would be so Okay. Fun. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate it. Guys, wasn't that a great chat with Heather? 
Once again, I want to say one more time how much grace God has for you if you are someone who is struggling with an abortion that you previously had. I have a friend here in Austin that teaches a post-abortion Bible study, and she shared with me so many times about the pain and sorrow that a woman of any age can feel for years. And so if that's you, let me say that I'm sorry for all of your pain. I want you to know that God loves you so much and that His grace is always available and abundant to you. And I just want to encourage you to be brave and talk to someone about your pain. Guys, I adored Heather. I always fear that when I talk to someone that I only know from online, that I'm going to be greatly disappointed. But not with Heather. Not at all. I could have chatted for hours, and I hope that through our conversation that you were encouraged and inspired as well. And I also hope that you learned a few things along the way today. Today's show was edited by Logan Garza, and the music is from Jason Poe. Friends, if you're loving these shows, would you mind going to iTunes and leaving a rating and a review? It's super easy. Seriously, go to jamieivy.com slash iTunes. Your rating and review actually helps more people find the show. So I want to thank you ahead of time for doing that. Guys, enjoy your week. If this is spring break for you, like it is for me, I hope you're enjoying that as well. Share the show with a girlfriend and have a happy hour with a friend. I will see you guys next week.